Have you been told that you have high levels of calcium in your urine and that this is the cause of your bone loss and potentially osteoporosis? Well, you're definitely not alone here. And I see this all the time. But what I want to do in this video is talk about the research behind high levels of calcium in your urine or hypercalciuria in the use of the drug hydrochlorothiazide or HCTZ as the treatment option for this issue. You see, I see this all the time. Patients are told, hey, you're losing bone because you have high levels of calcium in your urine. And if we give you this hydrochlorothiazide drug, it is going to reduce the calcium in your urine. And then they're just sent on their way, assuming that they have resolved the underlying issue of their bone loss. But the challenge with that is that the calcium in the urine is usually not the problem, although it can be. But generally, it's just a sign that something is happening that we need to explore. But that's not what's happening in the conventional medical model. So what I want to do is explain why this is dangerous for so many people with bone loss and what we can do about it. Okay, first, let's start with the why of high levels of calcium in urine or hypercalciuria. So there's a lot of potential reasons why someone might have high levels of calcium in their urine. And this is why testing urine, 24-hour urine for calcium is a reasonable test to do, but only under the right circumstances. We've actually stopped doing it for all of our patients as they come in because the results can be very misleading and often don't actually change the way that we would treat patients. We still do it. We just don't do it nearly as often. So there's this diagnosis called idiopathic hypercalciuria. So it's idiopathic hypercalciuria. It is the most common diagnosis when someone has high levels of calcium in their urine. And the most common reason is actually just genetics. And you might have been told if this is you that you have increased absorption of calcium in, uh, in your gut, meaning that the more you consume, the higher your blood levels and subsequently urine levels are going to be. Or it could be a genetic thing that causes what's called renal leak or leaking from the kidneys of calcium into the urine. But it could also be bone resorption. And this is the catch is because if you're assuming that it's coming from bone resorption, you might be misleading yourself and not understand the underlying cause of your bone resorption or that you have some other cause of idiopathic hypercalciuria. So how often is it the bone loss version versus the genetic gut or kidney problems? The answer is we really don't know. I couldn't find any data suggesting that one was more, uh, more common or what the rates of one versus the other were because the kidney loss and the gut hyperabsorption is actually pretty difficult to measure and, and uh, identify. We often don't know which of these things are happening, but the good news is, is that bones, as I've talked about before, are metabolically active organs. They leave us a trail of what's happening. And one of the things I want to get across here is to understand that what's happening in your kidneys and what's happening in your bones are related, but they're different systems. So you can have high levels of calcium in your urine and not have bone loss, and you can have bone loss and not have high levels of calcium in your urine. Yes, they can happen at the same time, but often they're happening independent of one another. Sorry to interrupt this video on this exciting topic of high levels of calcium in your urine, but if you are struggling to put together your own bone health program and you feel like you could use a little support, please consider coming to our free masterclass. Our masterclass is done about every other week. I lead it myself. We go through the top five mistakes that we see people frequently doing when they are looking to improve their bone health. We talk about our perspective from a clinical perspective. Uh, we watch people who are improving their bone health on a regular basis so we can help to steer people in their direction there. And then we also leave about 20 minutes for Q&A. Uh, again, I run this myself. It's an opportunity to ask your questions about bone health and then learn about some additional resources should you be interested in those. Link in the description on YouTube or you can head over to osteocollective.com. That's osteocollective.com and you can learn more about the masterclass there. Now, what are some other causes of high levels of calcium in your urine? Well, excess supplementation, boy, this is a big one. I see this all the time when people come to me and they say, oh, I have hypercalciuria and my doctor put me on hydrochlorothiazide. And I ask them, well, did they talk about your supplements? And they say, no. And I say, well, how much calcium were you taking? Well, I'm taking, you know, 2000 milligrams of calcium carbonate. Well, where do you think it's going to go? It has to get out of your body somehow. That's not going into your bones very well. So it's going to be excreted out through your kidneys. It's a no brainer. So that's why we really have to ask, you know, how much are we supplementing? How much calcium do we actually need? Because I see this as a really common cause of uh, hypercalciuria and hydrochlorothiazide, while relatively benign as a drug, does have some potential risks that we'll talk about. 
Another common reason for high levels of calcium in your urine would be just your dietary intake. So if you're consuming a lot of calcium, let's say through dairy, but you are vitamin D deficient or you're not consuming adequate vitamin K2, then you might actually be losing some of that calcium through diet through your urine as well. Now, here's a confusing one. Vitamin D excess, actually having too much vitamin D can actually result in the calcium being kicked out too. Vitamin D is a balance. Parathyroid being out of whack, certainly that can cause it. And sometimes we see this even with quote unquote normal labs with parathyroid because th that's an up and down uh, kind of lab because we're looking at that hormone. Thyroid dysfunction as well. So if you have high level of thyroid function or hyperthyroidism, that can result in bone loss, which would result in calcium being excreted. So that's a cause of bone loss. And then also just bone loss from any cause, right? So from disuse or high cortisol states or estrogen deficiency, both in men and women, by the way, inflammatory cytokines being elevated will cause this as well. Some other reasons why you might be having calcium in your urine are associated only exclusively with your kidneys and completely irrelevant of your bones. And those would be things like this hard diagnosis names here, but like renal tubular acidosis, some of these syndromes associated with the kidneys. There's some hypertension drugs that can do this. So high, plus, high blood pressure drugs that can do this. A high sodium diet can actually do it too. Now I'm not, I'm not a big fan of sodium restriction, but if you're consuming excess sodium more than your body needs and can tolerate, you'll actually kick out sodium and calcium together through your kidneys because that's how those uh, transporters work. There are some genetic predispositions too. Steroid drugs will do it. Lithium excess, if you're using lithium for bipolar disorder at higher doses, uh, retinol, which is the active form of vitamin A can do it. And again, estrogen deficiency, either naturally through um, a natural menopause situation or provoked by some kind of a drug, an aromatase inhibitor, et cetera. So after going through that whole list, you can see there's a lot of reasons why someone might potentially be losing calcium through their urine from their kidneys. Some of them are related to bone, but some of them are not. And if you don't know which one is causing your high levels of calcium in urine, then you don't know the whole picture. You see, we think about the root cause as the really with a solution or part of our four R approach to improving bone health. So that four, those four R's again are recognize why you're losing bone. That's a big one here, right? And then reverse those causes of bone loss. If you don't know why you're losing bone, you can't reverse those causes of bone loss and then retest to make sure you're headed in the right direction, and then revive your life so you can live without the fear of fracture. If you don't know why you're losing bone, if you don't know why you have high levels of calcium in your urine, then you might be missing the big picture. So I don't like hydrochlorothiazide for most of my patients that are put on it from other doctors, because yes, it works to solve the problem. It works to solve the condition of the lab test, but it doesn't fix the underlying problem of their bone health, assuming they have one. And most of my patients have osteoporosis. So remember, these are different systems. They are related, but not directly. If the drug makes you reabsorb calcium in your kidneys, it doesn't mean that it's going to fix the bone problem. In fact, I actually have found zero studies that show that bone mineral density improves by using hydrochlorothiazide. Why would that be? If you fix the hypercalciuria, shouldn't that cause an improvement in bone mineral density? Well, I think it's because the vast majority of people who are put on the drug aren't on it because they're losing bone naturally. They're on it because they have some cause of, of calcium being lost in the urine, and it's not relevant to the underlying cause of their bone loss. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong to use this drug in the right circumstances, but it's not going to fix the underlying problem of your bone loss, which should be our goal when we're working on osteoporosis improvement, bone metabolism improvement, and osteoporosis reversal. So why is this potentially an issue then if you don't need to be on it? Like I said, it's pretty benign, but there are some concerns. So one of my concerns is that as a diuretic, it can result in dehydration. It also results in loss of potassium. We know that potassium deficiency is already an issue for bone health in so many people, so we're not doing ourselves any favors here by losing more potassium through our kidneys. It can also have some metabolic implications. It can raise fasting glucose. It can raise fasting insulin. It can cause insulin resistance. It can cause elevated levels of uric acid, which can lead to things like gout and other metabolic dysfunction. So electrolyte or abnormalities like lower potassium or even dehydration can simply cause things like fatigue. We all know that we already have enough fatigue. We don't need to deal with that. The most important thing here is that I think there's a false sense of security about the diagnosis of hypercalciuria and osteoporosis together. People are going to think, oh, well, we've found the problem. 
it's this calcium in my urine and this drug fixes that. Therefore, I don't need to look any further. And that's not true. So then when a patient comes into our practice who is in this situation, and this happens pretty frequently, the question we need to ask ourselves is, why do you have high levels of calcium in your urine? And we can't always find the reason to that, but oftentimes it is a supplement, it's a vitamin D issue, or it's one of the other things that we talked about. We also need to take another step further and we need to ask the question, why else might you be losing bone? And this is really important. So I'll just give you an obvious example. Postmenopausal woman, I just literally had this question on social media uh, yesterday. So postmenopausal woman, not on hormone replacement therapy, diagnosed with hypercalciuria, put on hydrochlorothiazide, and she's asking, should I be doing anything else for my bone? And I asked the question, because I can't give medical advice on social media. I asked the question, did anybody talk to you about your estrogen deficiency? And she said, no, nobody's talked to me about hormones. Now, could the hypercalciuria be relevant? Could it be related to her bone loss? It could be, but let's fix the obvious first. If possible, let's, let's resolve the estrogen deficiency and then see what happens to the calcium in the urine. And I bet it would go away. And if it doesn't, then we can keep looking further. But conventional medicine asks the question of how do I stop the symptom or sign? Functional medicine asks the question of what is the underlying cause? And that is the whole principle of root cause medicine. And the truth is, is, if you don't know why you're losing bone, going on the drug hydrochlorothiazide does not stop the bone loss and you're still losing bone. You have to continue to retest, do the imaging and make sure that you're not losing bone if you're in this group. So I want to reiterate that if you look at the research around hypercalciuria, hydrochlorothiazide and osteoporosis, there is not a connection between the treatment of the calcium loss in the urine to improvement in bone mineral density. They are related functions. They are related systems. They do have an impact on each other, but they can function independently of each other too. And this is what I, I very frequently see. And if we are losing bone, and that is the cause of the high levels of calcium in your urine, we need to figure out why you're losing bone, not just treat the test. We don't want to just treat the test. We need to find the underlying cause. All right. So I hope that makes sense. The kidneys are complex and nephrologists are generally really smart, but they are not particularly interested in bone health generally. So I think that we always need to go into the nephrologist office to talk about kidneys, and this could be primary care, internal medicine. But whenever somebody is addressing calcium loss in the kidneys, we need to ask the question, is it coming from bone? And if so, why are you losing bone? Because the calcium in the urine is not the problem. It is a sign of a problem and we need to look for the problem. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for your time. Remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. I'll see you in the next video.